Hey friends, we'll get started soon. Hi guys. Hey Roto. Got the bot, I think. Oh, the bot got us again. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm. You know, last time I got in early enough to, and I took ownership and gave gave him the boot, but uh, I was distracted this time. All right. I am sharing, yes. And we're already recording. Roto, are you um, done traveling? Yeah. All right, today. So wow. Back again. How, how are you feeling? <laughs> oh, good, good. Oh, okay. oh good. Okay. Very good. Okay. I think we can get started. Welcome everybody to the February 20th, 2023 Aries Didcom V2 working group. Uh, I am your host, Lance, and I should remind you of the antitrust policy for Hyperledger, as well as the Hyperledger code of conduct. Um, so far, we have introductions, updates, uh, a demo for the Camel Didcom stuff that Thomas has been working on, uh, and maybe we'll do um, a comparison of the DWN carry Didcom. Well, we'll talk through possibly that comparison, and if we have more time after that, we can go over uh, status of AIP3 and anything to do with the Aries agent test harness. So um, please feel free. Let me put the link again for our session today. Yeah, feel free to add yourself to the attendees list um, if you like. And yeah, any announcements or other things that we want to cover um, today? We definitely will do Thomas's uh, presentation since we've focused on that for today. But anything else? Okay. Sounds good. Uh, okay. And then any short updates that we want to mention uh, regarding the Test harness or any of the frameworks related to Didcom V2. Otherwise, we can leave all that. Just looking to see. Bruce, did you uh, did you have any updates that you wanted to give before Thomas's presentation? Um, I met with Phil's uh, students a couple of times. Um, during the week, and they have completed the did exchange protocol using just a development environment. So as soon as you put some kind of a simple UI over it, we can begin trying to interoperate. Great. Very good. When when you're saying did exchange, you're talking did come v1 or v or or. They're they're working solely on V two. Okay. They know nothing of V one. Gotcha. The did exchange step though is um, simplified in V two, correct? Uh, yeah, that's my understanding. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else? It's there, um, Bruce, did you want to post a link or anything uh, to their work? It's up to you. Just want to yeah, make sure. There isn't anything visible yet or viewable. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, very good. All right, Thomas. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, go for it. Uh, thanks. So I tried to 
share my screen. Oh, yes, let me uh, unshare mine. Stop share. Mm. How about now? Mm. I need to. Yes. Okay. I so see, I see we, a command prompt. Yep. Ah, perfect. That's how we like it, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's start it. Um, and let's jump right into it without uh, further ado. Um, the thing is called DITCOM, and it starts, you know, it starts a terminal prompt. Uh, and as you can expect, there's some help messages uh, with all the various commands you can do. And, you know, I, I won't read this to you. Uh, we have a number of protocols that, that are supported. There are wallets, dates, invitations, connections, and so on and so on. Um, the full thing is, is here if you type commands. Yeah, so there's tab completion. Yeah. So, and let's start with what we all know about. Uh, let's start with an, with an interaction or integration between the Nessus agent, which is this one, and Akapai. So, uh, conceptually, uh, this platform supports multiple agents, um, multiple agents, remote agents, and they can all be interacted with uh, using, using this CLI. So first, let's see what we have. So you say wallet list and at this point uh, it interrogates its environment and it you know it notices uh, that there are uh, it's an Akapai instance running in a Docker container and we have one wallet in it. It's, um, it's a trustee wallet. So with, with, the, with the government as being a trustee, we can onboard um, endorsers, for example, like, the Faber University, which we will do right now. So we say wallet create, we give it a name, give it a name, we say it's Faber. And this one we want to do on Akapai. Right? So this has now created a wallet in Akapai, not in not in this platform, but in Akapai, uh, which you will see over here. Yeah, so it should have created this. This is the log from, from Akapai. Uh, and we, we need another wallet. Let's create that one. So wallet create, we need Alice's wallet, of course. Uh, Alice, and with this one, uh, we see that it creates a Nessus wallet, which is, is the default, uh, both in memory and they are listening on different ports. There's actually not listening, uh, for Alice it's not listening just yet. We need to start the agent, agent start. So now it's now it's listening and it actually started a camel endpoint. This is a little bit of uh, over-engineering, of course, you know, a simple HTTP endpoint would have been sufficient. Uh, but with this camel endpoint, what we're saying here is, uh, this thing is ready to receive DITCOM messages and then apply all sorts of routing transformation and otherwise uh, stuff that is necessary to, you know, to use to do useful stuff with these incoming messages. Okay, so now we ha we have that uh, created the wallets. We started the endpoint, and let's now work with the first protocols. So we have these three po uh, protocols here implemented. Uh, we start with uh, we start with creating an invitation. Uh, so this one we want. So Faber creates the invitation, not Alice. Oh, you notice the prompt has changed. Yeah, the prompt now says Alice, and then the two little arrows, and and this indicates that Alice is our uh, context wallet. So all the operations. Uh, all the commands uh, that we apply, they they relate to Alice's wallet. But because uh, we want Faber uh, to send the invitation, we can overwrite this and we say the inviter is Faber. 
it would be sufficient to to say just fav yeah because these are a aliases and and they can be abbreviated they must be sufficiently unique and they can also be uh, case insensitive so we want to create um an invitation from fava need to concentrate a little so i don't do this wrong um Okay, so this created uh, an invitation, and we see on the right-hand side here at the, at the right bottom that we now have a contextual invitation. So this is actually not um, uh, DITCOM v2. We are still talking about uh, DITCOM v1, because otherwise we couldn't be talking to, to Akapai. I'm sure you... So we can, now, uh, we can now look at this thing. We can say invitation show and because it's it's the contextual invitation oh i'm sorry uh alice doesn't have an invitation it's father uh, who has an invitation so we can say we want to see father's invitation it's this one and we can do this verbosely and and here you see uh the uh, the version one uh, the message that uh, has been passed to or can be used with Akapai. Right, so now Alice wants to receive the invitation and we use the same protocol again, RFCO3 and we do receive invitation. We don't need to say which one because there is only one. This is the contextual in invitation from the bottom right and we can be a little geeky about it and do this verbosely. And there you see uh, what is happening here is Alice received the invitation here. Yeah, so, so this one is the invitation. And um, part of receiving the, the invitation is the auto connect in this case. Yeah, so we, we do, um, we do an automatic in, uh, invocation of the RFC um, 0023 protocol and do the whole thing. And here, what we see at the bottom, uh, this is the short, this is the short form of an invitation. It has an ID, and it tells us what dits it uses. You know, in this case, it uses for Alice, it uses a did self, and for uh, Faber, it uses did self as well. And and the connection is active. We can now use this connection to, to send other protocol messages, uh, but Nessus also records what it has done. So we can look at the list of messages that actually got exchanged over this connection. You know, we, we've now executed just two simple commands, uh, but there are actually six messages going forth and back between Nessus and Akapai, and this is the, um, this is the, you know, uh, the protocol execution for uh, RFC 434 and RFC 23, followed by, I think it's RFC uh, 45, the trust ping at the end. So if we're interested, we can look at these messages in more detail because we, we missed those. You know, we just said uh, create an invitation, receive an invitation. Uh, but we, if we would like to know what the actual request did look like, yeah. So for example, this one here, uh, I can look at the request. So th this is what actually, you know, was sent um, from, you know, was sent from uh, from Nessus to to Akapai, and and here we see the uh, the. Uh, uh, we see the unpacked uh, representation of this message. So we don't see the encrypted message. On the wire, it's encrypted, of course, but but here we see um, the uh, human readable thing. And also what we see here, and this is the old style, um, uh, did come with one. We see that in the requests, the did exchange request, there's a, document attachment yeah did document attachment as as part of this protocol um let me see can i um right is it 
possible to share a different uh, screen real quick, or is this a hassle? Well, I do this in the end. So I think that the options are share a single screen or share your whole desktop so you can switch screens. But I could be wrong. OK, so. Uh, no, I do this later. OK. Yeah. Uh, OK, so. So and this con concludes what I wanted to show you uh, with regard to uh, to Ditcom V1. You know, so the takeaway is you can work with wallets. Uh, wallets have have invitations, connections, dids. So we can look at at the dit that that Alice has. Yeah, this. Uh, we can look at these verbosely and see those. Um, and so we, what did I say? We have we have connections, we have invitations, we have dits, we have messages, all related uh, to to the wallet. We can work with various agents, and we can do this uh, in connection with with Akapai. But the interesting stuff and what this to uh, talk is about is of course uh, Ditcom v2. So we want to do the same again uh, now using Ditcom v2. And so we we migrate Fava from from Akapai to Nessus real quick, yeah. And and to to do this migration from Fava from from Akapai to to Nessus, we it's not actually a migration at all. We just kill it, right? So so in, in this case, uh, I deleted I deleted the uh, the wallet at at the Akapai at the Akapai end. And just to be really safe and sure, I'll I'll do exit this thing. So I do Control D, um, and start it again. So I wanted to start on a you know clean thing. I could have continued from here, but just to be sure, in in this case we say again wallet list, and here we see we start at the same thing. We have one Akapai wallet, and we have zero other uh, wallets and we do the same again so we we sorry oh yeah clear i can do clear it clears the screen so uh, wallet create name father and it also supports history so i can click up yeah get the last command i can do multiple apps of course and down and so we do this we look at the wallets again list there it is. Uh, we can, of course, we can look at this also. We can show an individual wallet, I believe. Oh, yeah. So this needs to be an alias. So I can say fab wallet. So so this is the verbose representation of, of this wallet. It's a Nessus wallet in memory, listens on this port, but actually it doesn't, as we know. So we start the endpoint real quick. OK. So now we're ready to, to transmit and receive Ditcom v2 messages. And we do the same thing again. This time, a little bit more geeky. So we say, uh, Fava, as the inviter, please create an invitation, do this verbosely, and do this in Ditcom v2, right? So they, they, there you go. So Fava created an invitation, and in this case, uh, in this case, you don't see the uh, you see a message style which is obviously uh, Ditcom v2, which Fava uh, which Akapai wouldn't understand, right? And what you also see in this case is uh, this bit here, yeah. So so the uh, RFC four three four invitation from Nessus uh, uses a bit of proprietary stuff, yeah, uh, because it's not spec yet, as far as I know. And we need a we need a way to to uh, transport the initial connection information to the invitee. And in this case, uh, it's you know taking a very short route, simply attaching the did uh, the did document from Fava to the invitation. 
There are various other ways of doing this. We, we could have used did peer method one. We, we could have used the fabulous uh, carry light thing. Yeah, but, but it's all the same. You know, we need to find some way of telling Alice, this is the port you need to send messages to. And this is the initial uh, verific, uh, this is the initial verification key uh, that I used for, for this invitation. Right. So um, let me chat. Let me real quick show you. Right. So while I talk, there's a little link. Uh, so 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 there are three protocols that you see, and and they all use proprietary extensions. So if you if you like, you can in parallel look at those and and what's different to uh, the proper uh, did combi tool. Right. So we said Alice is ready to. Alice is ready to receive this invitation. Yeah, so again, uh, this, is, this is the contextual invitation we have now. Uh, we don't need to say that we want to, to use DITCOM v2 because it's already a DITCOM v2 invitation and the CLI will hopefully uh, recognize this. Right, so here, here it goes. This is the very short form of um, of what happened. So Alice received an invitation and she completed the DIT, co uh, the, uh, the DIT exchange, creating a, a connection, which is now here displayed on, on the bottom right. So instead of having a contextual uh, invitation, we now have a contextual connection, which I think I didn't mention before, but we had one too. So there is a, is a contextual wallet and a contextual uh, connection. And now we can again, uh, look at the messages that were sent across this connection. And here we see uh, it's a bit shorter than we had before in, in DITCOM v1 uh, because the DIT exchange is not necessary anymore, right? So, so what happened here is Alice received the invitation and then Alice sends a trust ping. So let's look at this. Uh, message show. So we use this abbreviated uh, alias for the message and we say verbosely. And it's kind enough to show us the, the message that, what actually, uh, that was actually sent. And so the first part here, so this, this one here, yeah. This, this is the trust ping, right? So, so we ping. Uh, we ping Faber with this message uh, on the wire. You can see you can see here the uh, Nessus records uh, a plain JSON message, but on the wire, this is actually signed and encrypted, right? Um, that it's a bit hard to, you know, in in the log file we we would see the uh, the the actual wire format in the log file. You would see that this is an an encrypted and signed message, and here again a bit of proprietary stuff, right? So, so the trust ping message um, does the same as, as the invitation message. Alice uses a, a, an, an attachment to the message to communicate her part of um, the DIT document, right? So this is the information, the same information flowing from, from Alice to Faber. So Alice tells Fava what, what uh, service endpoint it is using, what protocols she accepts, you know, and details about uh, the DITs, the authentication and, and the encryption key uh, for, for this peer-to-peer -peer connection. And when you look at the messages again, you see that Fava sent a response uh, to Alice. So let's look at this. Um, message show. Um, so response. There you go. So this is a 
this is a very short uh, ping response, which is also hiding, uh, unfortunately, it's it, it's hiding in an important detail that is happening, um, you know, under the hood, and that. Uh, this is that Fava used the from prior feature that we talked about last last week, right? So it was actually very funny last week because I I did have the did exchange protocol implemented uh, and all the, all those messages going forth and back and and then I learned about uh, from prior and of course this makes it a lot easier, right? So when we now switch the wallet, uh, we switch the wallet to to Fava and we can now look at the dits. There you go. You know, Fava actually now uses two dits, right? So so it um it um what is the proper term for it? It it rotated. Yeah. It rotated it rotated the the did and the keys that it uses for this peer-to-peer -peer connection. So the invitation was based on, I suppose, the first one. And if we scroll up, we will probably find that the invitation uses this verification key and, and this qualified uh, uh, did URL. And then uh, Fava received the um, trust ping. And in the response, Fava uses the from prior feature with, with the original um did from from the invitation and it created a new one and in the message from you, you see this yeah the message from 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 the trust ping response fava used the second did that that it created just for the response yeah so this is the form of of uh, did rotation as part of of the uh, did come if you uh, v2 protoc uh, protocol and it's I think it's beautiful you know it's really really nice that that you can on on every message you can rotate the dits and and the keys of course so we can switch back to Alice if we want we say well let's switch back to to Alice and look at her dits and there you go she only uses the one yeah, this is the one did uh, that Alice created for the trust ping message. Right. So now we we have some some more stuff to look at, if you like. Oh, we have a we have the connection. I think the connection I have not showed you. Connection show verbose. So. So this this is the internal representation of of a connection. It's very similar to what you see in uh, for Akapai. There's the roles um, inviter invitee, and the connection is active. It it tells you uh, tells you the current did that it's using and the respective uh, endpoint URLs, um, and it also tells you the original uh, the original. This, I, I believe this is the verification key from from the original um, did that Fava used to to initiate uh, the connection. Right, and because we have other protocols as well, so we can do we can do the commands again. Yeah, and there you see we have so we have seen we've only worked with this one. No. We only worked with this one here, yeah. So we we created a uh, an invitation and we received an invitation. Oh yeah, here here's the last one. This is also quite nice. So so we can say because it's so common, right, to to create an invitation and receive an invitation. There's a shortcut for it. So we can say uh, connect, and we want to connect Fava to Alice, and that's it, right? So so. Everything we've seen before, uh, it just says, you know, uh, use this protocol, call, create, a, establish a connection. Fava is the inviter, 
and Alice is, is the uh, invitee. And this can be abbreviated because FAP is sufficiently unique that it knows, oh, there is only one wallet, this, this will actually map, right? So if, you, if I had thousands of wallets, I need to be more specific about this, yeah. Um, I could also have used the, uh, the wallet ID, of course, you know, as, as the unique identifier. But in this case, I just use the wallet name and abbreviate it, and I also have a small f at the beginning. It's sufficiently unique, as I said before, right? Um, so, yeah, I think the rest is boring. We, we can send another trust ping message. Yeah, so we can say uh, Alice wants to uh, use protocol, the trust ping protocol to send a ping. Right, and if we look at, so that happened and she received the response. Um, and that's interesting now, if, if you look at the messages, uh, you will notice that, that this has used the version one of the protocol and not version two, right? So we can say, So we can say uh, use this protocol again. Four three two. Send. No, sorry. Of send ping, and we do this in Ditcom v two, and we do this verbosely, and we get an error. Oh, I know what's going on because I did connect here. I did connect. And I did a connection in V1 style. And yes, V1 style creates did sovereign, did sovereign IDs, and they are not created in, uh, we cannot resolve their uh, did documents. So let me do this again. Do the connection in DITCOM V2. I, I think this should work. Let me see. DITCOM V2. Yeah. And did it work? Yes, it, it, it did work because we now have, uh, again, we, we both parties use did key and we now have a different connection. Yes, we do have a different connection. And now we can send the ping message again. And there you go. Right, so this time uh, it, it worked okay because the connection that it uses actually allowed uh, DITCOM v2 messages. And here you see uh, the ping and and the pong. And this time it's, it's perhaps uh, noteworthy uh, that the trust ping did not have an attachment, right? So we established we established a DITCOM v2 connection with, with the connect command. And as part of this command, there already was uh, a trust ping exchange as part of establishing the connection, right? And um, this trust ping that we sent here is actually the second one, right? And the second one does not need to, to have the Alice's the document attached and Fava does not need to rotate um, its key if it doesn't want to. It could, of course, but I think I don't think it does in this case. Right, last thing. Um, that I have is the IFC 95. So this is a simple, you know, send a message thing. And we do this in DITCOM v2. For example, we could say, ich habe Sauerkraut in meinen Lederhosen. And we want to see this verbosely. And there you go. Ich habe Sauerkraut in meinen Lederhosen. Um, it was sent from, from Alice to, to Fava. And it used a, a plain, uh, you know, it did come be too plain message. We could also say something else, of course, but uh, we could also do. It does code completion when you put the options in the front of the final parameter. Yes. There, we, we could also sign this message and we could encrypt this message. So 
although it says RFC uh, 95, RFC 90, 95, it's, it's, it's not really 95. It's, it's asynchronous, of course, you know, like 95 as well, but it also uh, supports uh, signed and encrypted, encrypted messages because that is already part of DITCOM v2. Right, and then we have one more thing. So if I do commands, and then we have this thing here, verifiable credentials, of templates and policies and, and a whole lot, which I would like uh, not to demo just yet, yeah, in, in case you wonder. So there is a release, you, you can download the release, you can do all of this, what, what you've seen today, you, you can do this uh, at home. Uh, but the verifiable credential stuff, it's, it's still a work in progress, uh, which I'd like to demo next time, if I may. Um, and what else do we have? Uh, so yeah, I, I think I think that's it. Um, and if you like to read about what we've just done, um, I put it as start stop sharing my screen. So it's here. So so this is this is a quick write up of of what we've just seen. Yeah, so I hopefully I, I didn't miss anything uh, from this. And yeah, thanks for watching. Um, yeah. Best CLI I, I ever seen. I love yeah. it. Yeah, you That's love great. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Excellent, Sean. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, fantastic. I love how you organized it by RFC. Um, that's really cool. And yeah, showing Didcom V1 and V2, in the same demo. Fantastic. Um, Which is... library did you use for Didcom? Is there Sigma or? Yeah, I, I use. No, no, no. I use Sigma, and and actually, actually today. Yeah, they uh, they accepted a, a large pull request uh, for me, so so they have now multisig again because the mm, uh, the the uh, Nimbus uh, Jose uh, they use internally they they use Nimbus uh, uh, Jose and and that was quite outdated. I think it was like like almost two years old, uh, be because that would have pulled their multisig support out of it but but now we have multisig again and uh, we can use the the latest we can use the latest nimbus with with sigma right great that's the shell the shell script right the what you use the the, the sorry the, the java version of the Sigma. yes library. yes yeah. yeah it's java it's it's actually i think it's kotlin yeah it's oh, kotlin yeah yeah, it's it's Colton. and and so so this is you know I I couldn't have done this without the help of of you know so much uh, brilliant folks before me working on on the Sigma library and the, and the other great library that I use is Vault ID. Yes, it's from a from a um, I think it's an Austrian um, company working on on Epsi stuff and yeah. and from from them from them there's um, I use uh, it's it's a lot of support comes from comes from that library as well, right? So so for example, all the various services that I use, the uh, the the crypto services, the storage for for the model, and so on and so on. Yeah. So so I I really just integrated um, uh, Sigpas Ditcom v2 with Vault and put this CLI on top. Right, so so this is the three things that are, that I actually did. after a year of learning what I could buy actually. <laughs> so right, so a few more things that I'd like to mention. Uh, yeah, first thing, ideally, I'd like to work with some other agent on true interoperability, right? So so I like to find friends who actually would like to try this out with me right so and maybe maybe this is in preparation of the 
areas into our profile 3.0, right? So, so that we can already actually test some real real world uh, interoperability, right? So, so maybe the JavaScript uh, agent or the Go agent or whatever agent is is ready to to talk with me. Uh, Ditcom v2, so I um, would be very happy to to work with whoever uh, is interested in this. And then, you know, the these Nessus preview protocols that I posted. Uh, so so they are a pain in the neck, of course, right? So so I would like to get rid of them. Right and and replace them uh, with with actual Ditcom v2 spec stuff, right? So I'd 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 like I'd like us to to um, uh, find an agreement or consensus of of how this initial did doc exchange should actually work. And ideally, this would find its way into the DITCOM spec or one of the supporting specs, right? So fill out the, the bits there. Uh, right. So verifiable credentials need to get added. This will come from Vault ID as well. They have the concept of um, a, a policy engine. Uh, open policy engine OPA, and so this uses this uses uh, its own language Rego, I think it's called, where you can, in a very rich format, you you can define your policies uh, that you want to apply to your to your DITCOM v2 messages, right? So so you could take two credentials, two or more credentials, and Build a presentation out of this, these credentials. Aggregate a few attributes, and then you can use the uh, Rego language with with their policy uh, engine to to validate that presentation of the verifiable credentials. So it's very powerful, uh, but it's not ready to to demo just yet. Right. So this thing doesn't have a this thing doesn't have a, a DIT resolver. There, there's an abstraction for it, of course, you know, and so we we, we have seen uh, DITs being resolved and to to DIT documents, but but this is all in memory, right? So this thing is not is not connected to to a ledger just yet, right? So uh, the other thing that needs to get added is is a persistent and secure key storage. Right, so so the the little trick that I'd done earlier, you know, you just kill the thing and restart it, and it 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 starts from from a blank screen. And this should perhaps not happen, right? So it should remember the wallet state and it should remember the keys that it used in the wallet. Um, right, and stuff from your wish list, of course, you know. And it's Walt ID, right? It's yeah. W A L T. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. And if you if you have the link to the uh, pull request that you did with Sigpa, uh, I'm happy to put that up there. No, you know, no pressure. But yeah, I I have it, of course. Um, it's yeah. Uh, it's it's got a. It's got a silly title because they just used what the the commit message from from the very last uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so so what I essentially did here with, with this pull request, um, I, I took out the stuff, the multi six stuff from from Nimbus, and ported that over to to the Ditcom. Uh, code base, right? So I needed to do a few changes, but it's it's not that an original work here. It's it's very complex still, you know. But but it's not. It actually it it would require the review that it got was that all the tests in 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 Ditcom still pass with the updated Nimbus, yeah. And the updated Nimbus didn't have multisig anymore, so so. It, the multisig now comes from from Sigpa directly, and I didn't touch their test cases, and so hopefully, 
hopefully that this is sufficient um, for, for testing. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Um, and then what is, uh, you've talked about camel in the past, what is kind of your, I don't know if I want to say goal or, or roadmap. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, for your work. Yes. So, so all of this, all of this work, you know, at, at one point, it needs to be product relevant, of course, right? So, so my, you know, due to the vision and and generosity of of my superiors, I can can do all this work, but but eventually it needs to be product relevant, right? So, so my my vision uh, in in this regard is that the stuff that you have seen now is you know preview at best right so so we, we can say we, we've seen a few did v2 messages going forth and back but all of these mes messages use proprietary stuff from that i came up with right so that needs to go right so so that needs to go uh and of course it's no good that nessus can talk to nessus you know so this thing needs to talk to someone to something else to be relevant right so so that needs to happen as well and and then to be product relevant uh it the persistence and secure storage needs to get fixed right so so vault id supports if, if, I've, if i've seen it correctly they have support for secure cloud storage of s3 and so on so they have various plugins uh that you can you, you can secure your stuff with. So that needs to get integrated. And uh, and once this is done, I'm happy to I'm happy to to put this to wrap this into a camel component, right? So so what will happen then is that camel has has a large variety of of protocol in, uh, endpoints that it can stand up. Yeah, it's not only HTTP; it can connect to all sorts of messaging systems and so on and so on and so on. So, so all these all all these Camel endpoints can then receive uh, DITCOM v2 messages, right? So, so they would get routed to this component, and this component would do all the you know unpacking of the message, the security stuff around it, and and all the protocol chit chat that that needs to happen, right? And and at the end of it, uh, there would possibly be a, a, a message body which has which has some uh, you know business oriented payload. Right, so so it has a meaning in in some sort of integration stuff, and the very long shot vision for this is, I know that Camel is is very you know integrated into into the IT op operations from for example Schiphol Airport in in Amsterdam, right? So Schiphol runs on Camel. Right, so to a very large degree, right? So, so ideally, you know, let's say in a year from now or so, Shipple, uh, which which does a lot of relevant stuff and and security related stuff and stuff that that we can I can easily see uh, would have a connection to to Ditcom v2, and and in in an ideal world, we would have a Camel component that can talk. Ditcom v2 and Shippel would perhaps be happy to uh, to look at it, you know, and and do some of their some of their critical stuff, you know, their security re relevant stuff. They they do this um, via Ditcom v2, and because they already have Camel and they already know Java and they do their stuff in Java, for for them it would be easy, you know, to 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 bridge that gap. So, so that would be the perfect world in a year from now or so. And in a year from now, and so we would have uh, the area's interoperable, interoperability profile, right? There would be a number of agents so, so that Nessus can, so this code base or whatever this code base will, will look like in a year, in a year time, uh, will talk 
we'll be able to talk to a number of agents and and then yeah more adoption for didcom v2 in a in a business related relevant manner so that that's the the idea yeah that's fantastic um in terms of interopping with other agents there is the movement within the didcom v2 uh, user group uh, at a diff etc to begin hosting uh ser our services uh in a way that we can uh you know show didcom uh, v2 is alive <laughs> mm -hmm. and people can uh you know begin uh you know testing against each other's uh, instances. So, uh, is there are you, are you interested in hosting this in a way that others can interface with it? Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and and timing and like what does what does everyone think that looks like? Um, it's just making mediators and agents uh, available um, out there, but can we do more like learning from the Aries agent test harness to kind of um, advertise the agents that exist and show uh you know maybe even the uh you know which agents work uh with each other ideas thoughts i think in a in a perfect world again akapai would get ready soon to talk didcom v2 right and then when when Akut, when akapai is ready say at a basic level yeah, so so this is the the basic Aries into our profile 3.0. Um, when 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 Akapai is ready, uh, we can have Didcom v2 compliance at some basic level, right? And and then we can leverage their work in in the test harness as well. So it would be very easy to to integrate this thing into the um, into the Akapai test harness. Right, and and for Akapai, of course, it would be very easy as well if, if not done already by default. What what is missing there are are a few features and scenarios in that test harness that actually exercise Didcom v2. And why is it missing? Yeah, of course, because the reference implementation can't speak it just yet. Right. Yeah. So, part I think that's part of the reason that the well. So obviously this working group is fo focused exactly like you're saying, uh, Thomas, but at the same time in the diff did come V2 world, they, there's no dependency, right, on Aries at all. Um, they oh. certainly support AIP3. And I guess what I'm, we're, there is concern because uh, the, as best as we know, the AFJ and Akapai did come v2 implementations are kind of on hold. Sigpa has their pull request with uh, AFJ, but they have said that they uh, have no more cycles to work on that specifically. So that that pull request is kind of in this middle point because it was submitted right during the transition of AFJ point two and point three, and that was a huge actual uh, refactor. And so the pull request was more geared towards uh, point two, but point three is 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 the focus because it makes things much more modular, etc. In terms of Akapai, the work was being done by Hakan and his master students, but um, he has transitioned to a new role, a new position. We don't know the details of that. He thought he might kind of return uh, once that got spun up, but we haven't seen him uh, since that's happened. So essentially the Akapai did come V2 work is in kind of a middle ground. So that's part of why uh, I'm starting to gravitate towards, is there an even simpler uh, solution in terms of each 
kind of group who's doing didcom v2 uh, implementations standing up services and for us to have a way to kind of show the public oh you know these services exist out there you know sometimes they might be down or whatever but there's multiple of them uh and you can begin trying to uh message uh with these these services that exist i i think you need three people you know there's there's one for each agent yeah so you have me i volunteer right so so somebody from some other agent and you need a third guy who is agent agnostic who stands up a, a basic uh test compatibility test suite right so, yeah a, a compatibility test kit and if, if you have those three people right then you can have you can have uh interop going pretty quickly I, I don't i don't think necessarily that this needs to be publicly hosted because this is so fast uh, moving so fast right but but you can run it locally right so you can you can run nessus locally and it will only take you 10 minutes to do what i've done here in in the cli you can do this at home right so so anybody can do this but i think we should have we, sh we should have at least three interested parties and one should be agent agnostic, right? Okay, yeah. Ooh. What do we want to call that? A test? Uh, um, what wording did you use for that one? Agent agnostic. In in the Java <laughs> world, it's it's called TCK. It's a test compatibility kit. Mm, I like it. Spelling. Okay. Yeah, any other thoughts on that? I, I do think that the it, from the diff point of view, they want these agents to be hosted. Uh, I know that um, Sam has talked about having uh, like a Amazon Lambda uh, service. I don't know a ton about these, but it sounds like uh, it just gets spun up when needed uh, so i don't know maybe when a request comes in or whatever it can somehow respond to it and then go back to sleep type thing um it, it yeah it just would seem it's it's almost proof of life right instead of um these implementations you know roots id same thing uh, these implementations we 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 have like a mediator service who that that's sitting out there um that has proven wildly useful just in terms of uh you right. know uh some mobile agent says you know oh, okay i'm starting to do didcom v2 things and uh yeah they reach out to to our mediator um so no, no problem you can have it next week i i have the nessus tech <laughs> domain yeah yeah i i have the the, the <laughs> nessus dash tech domain so we can have it running there yeah okay it, the, All right. Well, I think. Um, oh, yes. We're almost out of time. Wow, that that flew by. I mean, amazing demonstration, yeah, Thomas. Amazing. Just uh, I, for you, I, I feel like you're. Uh, you know, you kind of sit back, and you know, we don't see a ton from you. You know, and then wow, you come with like amazing things, amazing ideas. You know, you've obviously spent quite a bit of time on it. Uh, you're probably top 20 in the world in, in Didcom V2 at this point, so. <laughs> <laughs> top one, top one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but anyways, thank you so much for sharing. I, I, I think it's, it's the first station that talks B1 and B2 at the same time. So right. That's a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Okay. All right, so I, uh, you know, let's chew on this, and um, yeah, just consider how we can uh, show more proof of life, give give more support uh, for an ecosystem, and that's our time. Thank you so much, Thomas. Good to see everybody. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lance. Okay. Thank you all. Bye bye. bye, -bye.